Welcome back. All right, so today in the career uh, video series, uh, Ed Jovanovsky. And for the record, I'm going to try to keep this going during the regular season because sure, why not? Uh, so continue to follow the thread of players. And from Bure yesterday, we go to Jovanovsky today, who was traded for Pavel Bure. And I remember when he was the number one pick of the Florida Panthers in 1994, and the hype was real. And fans were pretty psyched about seeing what he'd be able to do at the NHL level. Uh, 1995, he won World Junior Championship gold. So, uh, with Team Canada. It wouldn't be the last time or most famous time he wore Team Canada's colors either. So there was a lot of hype. And so in 95-96, when he makes his debut in the NHL, plays 70 games that year, 10 goals, 11 assists, 21 points. He ends up being part of that team that goes on that run all the way to the final in 96, right? 22 games, one goal, eight assists, nine points. So he's an all-rookie team player, and he was third in Calder voting. Um, I, I think the thing with Jovanovski was that uh, the, the offense didn't quite develop the way that Florida envisioned. So 96, 97, he kind of takes a step back on some level. Like he just he doesn't take that advancement. So without that advancement, it feels like a step back. 61 games, 7 goals, 16 assists, 23 points. But the, the Florida Panthers take a step back too. Uh, they only have the five playoff games. He does not record a point in those five playoff games. 97-98, 81 games played, 9 goals, 14 assists, 23 points. Nothing overly remarkable with Jovanovski at this stage, right? He's playing in Florida where, to this day, and Aaron Ekblad's a good example of this, you can have a pretty darn good defenseman that doesn't get enough height because they play in Florida. So 98-99 with Florida, 41 games, 3 goals, 13 assists for 16 points. On January 17th of 1999, he is part of that huge trade. He's traded with the 2000 first round pick, Mike Brown, Dave Gagne, and Kevin Weeks for a 2000 third round pick, Pavel Bure, Brad Ferentz, and Brett Hedekin. So a lot of expectation as he's kind of considered to be the, the main centerpiece that the Canucks got back in exchange for Bure. And that first year, it it... It, it was tough, right? You're going from a situation where in Florida you're mostly anonymous to going to Vancouver where everybody knows who you are. 31 games with Vancouver after that deal. Two goals, nine assists, 11 points. And Vancouver was pretty uh, dysfunctional as a franchise at this point. And I'm not just talking about like missing the playoffs dysfunctional. I mean, there is dysfunction inside, outside, locker room, on the ice, off the ice, you name it. His first full year in Vancouver you start to see what he's going to be. 75 games, 5 goals, 21 assists, 26 points. But the other part of his game, and this is right around where I feel like I should mention this, is that in November 23rd, 1996, he was suspended three games for leaving the penalty box in order to have a fight. So, yeah, that's in his second year. And it shows that uh, he's got a temper. He's got a temper. Uh, April 2nd of 1999, so this is after the deal to Vancouver that first year, uh, Shane Corson got suspended five games for going into the Vancouver Canucks locker room to have some words with Ed Jovanovski. His statement was that Jovanovski had said something regarding his family. So, Corson, Jovanovski, not on each other's Christmas lists. And he would get suspended again, but not until 2009-2010. And, and with the way he played, very physical, intense, there's there's always that concern about, you know, is he make sure he's on the right side of the line with this. So 2000-2001 is really where he comes into his own in Vancouver. This is what Florida was counting on. And if he had had this season in Florida, there's no way they trade him in the Bray deal. 79 games, 12 goals, 35 assists, 47 points. He plays in the All-Star game in four playoff games for Vancouver. One goal, one assist. So... As the West Coast Express era is getting started for Vancouver, Jovanovski is right in the middle of it. Uh, 82 games in 2001-2002, 17 goals, 31 assists, 48 points. Six playoff games, one goal, four assists. He actually ended up being sixth in Norris Trophy voting, plays in the All-Star Game, and he represented Canada at the 2002 Winter Olympics. And uh, yeah, he ends up with, uh, with gold medal. For Team Canada. So he's he's really at this point kind of a, a hero in Vancouver and just nationally too. And he's seen as one of the toughest defensemen in the league. Uh, one of the biggest hitters. And if he had to drop the gloves, he could. And and so this there, there really isn't anything he doesn't bring. And that's on top of the goals and assists and the points. And, 
Uh, yeah, a power play point man, sure. 2002-2003, only plays the 67 games, but records 6 goals, 40 assists, 46 points. So, despite missing 15 games with injuries, he actually sets a career high in assists and almost reaches his career high in points. In 14 playoff games, 7 goals, 1 assist, 8 points. So, 7 goals in 14 playoff games is excellent. He ends up 6th in Norris Trophy voting, and he goes to the All-Star game. So we go to 2003-2004, and this is where the Canucks have already started to kind of come down from the West Coast Express era. It's not it's not a very long era of the West Coast Express. It's remembered fondly by Canuck fans, but it lasts about a year and a half. 2003-2004, uh, 56 games, 7 goals, 16 assists, 23 points. And in the playoffs, plays the 7 games in a series they lose against Calgary, records 4 assists. So you have the lockout season of 0405, right? So you get the salary cap in there. 0506, this is where things get interesting. He only plays the 44 games. 8 goals, 25 assists, 33 points. A lot of the conversation during that season was, okay, so Vancouver, things aren't going very well. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Trade him. The Canucks aren't interested in trading him. And there was the debate about, well, are they going to try to keep him? Are they going to be able to keep him? Are they? What's going to happen? And in the end, he does go to unrestricted free agent market, and the Canucks end up getting nothing in return, which is not that unusual uh, in, in Vancouver circles to see a star player leave. I talked about this in the video yesterday, where you, where we saw Courtnell left as a free agent, Ronning left as a free agent, Jovanovski left as a free agent. These are all guys that if you traded them out at the deadline, who knows, right? So... 2006-2007, he's in Arizona. He signed on July 1st. So, yeah, he's he's not a free agent that waited very long to be signed because he's a big, strong defenseman uh, who can be a team captain type. He's an assistant captain on this jersey. This is the Jovanovski Coyotes jersey. That's the reason I'm wearing Coyotes. And he had a renaissance with the Coyotes. 54 games in 2006-2007, 11 goals, 18 assists, 29 points. And he was in the All-Star game that year. And it, it you could see, even though his points totals went down a little bit in Arizona, that it just felt like he was more back to himself than he was the year before in Vancouver. 2007-2008, 80 games played, 12 goals, 39 assists, and he sets a new career high with 51 points and is in the All-Star game again. So, Jovanovski, absolutely fantastic run he's on here. And so... Uh, fans in Vancouver were completely reasonable, of course, about the fact that Jovanovski continued to be a star defenseman. Uh, elsewhere, 2008-2009, he plays all 82 games, 9 goals, 27 assists for 36 points. Another excellent season. Not top 6 in Norris voting. 6th is the closest he ever got to the Norris Trophy. But in 2009-2010, where he was suspended twice for 2 games each, so that's 4 of the 16 games he misses, Played 66 games that year, 10 goals, 14 assists, 24 points. Plays 7 playoff games for Arizona and records 1 goal in those 7 games. And then he has a hard time staying healthy from this point going forward. This is where the, the physicality starts to take a toll. The style of game he's playing, whether it's the shot blocks or just all the hits, it adds up. And eventually defensemen like this will start to show signs of wearing down. So in his last year in Arizona, 50 games played. 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points. I'm aware it's the Phoenix Coyotes at this point. Um, so in the playoffs that year, 4 games, just the 1 assist. So he goes to the UFA market. So Arizona didn't get anything back for him either. Uh, July 1st, he signs as a free agent back in Florida. So it proves you can go home again. And that first year in Florida, 66 games, 3 goals, 10 assists, 13 points. It is one of those rare occasions where Florida makes the playoffs as well. He plays all seven games of that playoff round for the Florida Panthers. No points, but things look good. And then, again, injuries, right? 2012-2013, he only plays six games, has one assist. 2013-2014, plays 37 games, records one goal, four assists, five points in what would be his final season. He ends up playing 1,128 games altogether, 137 goals, 363 assists, and a nice round number, 500 points for Ed Jovanovski. 76 games in the playoffs, 11 goals, 19 assists for 30 points. And again, the number one draft pick in 1994, who looked like maybe maybe it wasn't really working out that great, goes to Vancouver, has some of his best years, goes to Arizona, 
has a nice comeback there as well, and then rounds things out where he started with the Florida Panthers. Nice career overall, and again, I know that when he played, there were people who thought he was a dirty player. There were comments on some of the hits that weren't necessarily suspended. But he, again, he played right on that edge. Very physical player and uh, a lot of fun to watch. And Joe Volkop, as, as he was he was called, as the, the, the nickname stuck. Uh, Joe Volkop was one of my favorite defensemen in Vancouver. I think before the arrival of Quinn Hughes, uh, Jovanovski would be the one that I would say was the most talented defenseman Vancouver ever had. And unlike with Hughes, who's still coming into his own, jo Jovanovski could do everything. There really wasn't anything he couldn't do. And uh, yeah, the only part that was missing with Jovanovski was it's a shame that he wasn't a Canucks draft pick and he wasn't with the team all the way through. But he, some of his best years were in Vancouver and he was a lot of fun to watch. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.